Did you know that more than half of all known stars are part of double or multiple star systems? Dear Traveler, welcome. Today we're embarking on a side reel epic at the heart of one of the most spectacular celestial ballets. We'll go beyond the simple spectacle of a solitary star to explore the dazzling complexity of multiple star systems. These formations, where two, three, or even thousands of stars are bound together by the eternal dance of gravity, sparkle like jewels in the infinite setting of our galaxy. Prepare to be amazed by the beauty and intrigue of these systems, where stars can come so close that they distort each other, exchanging matter and creating wonders of light and energy. Multiple star systems are a truly breathtaking cosmic spectacle. But before you set off on your next adventure, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. Thank you and have a great trip. Man has always been fascinated by the stars. In ancient times, we believed that stars were holes in the roof of the world through which burning fires could be observed. In ancient Greece, everything in the sky was a star. Planets were wandering stars and comets were hairy stars. The cosmos is an inexhaustible source of wonder thanks to the diversity of objects it offers. Even with the naked eye, observing the sky allows us to appreciate the most obvious characteristic of stars, their luminosity. Some stars shine brighter than others. 6,000 of them are visible to the naked eye under ideal observation conditions. The simple use of binoculars or a telescope opens up infinite horizons, making it possible to visually reach millions of stars, whether in the Milky Way or in other galaxies. All stars are unique, but they have one thing in common. They produce energy and light. Their appearance can be very diverse. Some shine almost a million times brighter than our sun others much less. Some are a thousand times larger than the sun, others a hundred times smaller. Some can reach tens of thousands of degrees Celsius at their surface, while others are no hotter than a few thousand degrees. The first attempt to catalog stars according to their luminosity was made by the astronomer Hipparchus of Nicaea in the second century BC. Among his many works is a stellar catalog listing 850 stars according to their coordinates and luminosity. Later, Claudius Ptolemy, a Greek scientist living in Alexandria, took up and enriched this data in his Almagest. In this treatise, he reorganized the whole of ancient mathematical astronomy, explaining it clearly and coherently. In Ptolemy's catalog, based on that of Hipparchus of Nicaea, the stars are listed in six classes. The brightest stars are of first magnitude, the fainter ones are of second magnitude, and so on down to those almost invisible to the naked eye, which are classified as sixth magnitude. The term magnitude is still used to describe the brightness of stars, nebulae, and galaxies. Not all stars have the same color. Since ancient times, some stars have appeared red, others yellow, white, or blue. The hottest stars, such as Rigel or Vega, appear bluish, with surface temperatures of over 10,000 degrees Celsius or 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Stars closer to our sun and slightly cooler than the above appear yellow. 
the coolest stars whose surface temperatures are still around 3,000 degrees Celsius, or 5,400 degrees Fahrenheit, appear reddish, like Betelgeuse or Antares. But what are stars really? A star is a gigantic nuclear factory that produces light. The one we know best and the one closest to us is the Sun. But there are billions of billions of stars like the Sun in the universe. They shine like the Sun, but we only see them at night. The Sun, on the other hand, is so close to us that its presence during the day dazzles us and even prevents us from seeing the other stars. Unlike a planet, a star produces its own light. Planets, on the other hand, simply reflect the sun's light. A star is a gigantic ball of gas millions of times more massive than the Earth, and hundreds of times larger. It spins on its axis, producing intense light. Surface temperatures reach several thousand degrees. There is a wide variety of stars, each different from the next. Red, blue, massive, small. Stars emit light because the matter that makes them up is extremely compressed in their center, in what is known as the star's core. The heat in this core reaches several million degrees, producing nuclear reactions and releasing gigantic amounts of energy. This energy is then released in the form of light. Nuclear reactions in the core cause atoms to coalesce and fuse. In the vast majority of stars, hydrogen atomic nuclei fuse to form helium atomic nuclei. Once upon a time, interstellar clouds of gas and dust collapsed under their own weight, giving rise to stars. These giant complexes of molecular clouds appear to telescopes as dark specks standing out against a luminous background. These systems can reach diameters of up to 300 light years. They are the most massive structures in the galaxy, independently of globular clusters. And it's precisely where we see dark, cold clouds of gas and dust today that new stars will one day sparkle. Nothing in the universe is eternal. The night sky doesn't look the same today as it did a billion years ago, and it will look very different a billion years from now. The birth of a star can take tens of thousands of years. When a star is born, the gas surrounding it is colored, and irregularly shaped clouds of dust stand out against a glowing background. Within these cosmic nurseries, the space between stars is not empty. Gravitation can bring interstellar material together to form gigantic clouds. At the very heart of these clouds, it's dark and cold. Good conditions for different atoms to combine and form simple molecules. Hence the name, molecular clouds. When a dense cloud of interstellar matter contracts and fragments into small clusters under the action of gravity, the center of the cluster forms a protostar. In the same way that the cluster of matter that gave birth to it turned on itself, the protostar is guided by a rotational movement, and the residual matter is distributed in a disk that rotates around it. The protostar attracts matter from the disk, enabling it to continue growing. Dense bursts of gas called jets occur as large quantities of matter fall onto the protostar. These apparent jets reveal the protostar's presence within the opaque clouds. The protostar generates energy by compressing these gases. The denser it becomes, the more matter it attracts and the greater its gravitational attraction. The movement of matter accelerates, and the temperature rises. Once its core is sufficiently heated for hydrogen to fuse into helium, the protostar becomes a young star.
For almost 90% of its life, the star converts the hydrogen in its core into helium by nuclear fusion, producing energy that is released in the form of light. The star's life comes to an end when the fully transformed hydrogen in its core runs out. The star will then die out more or less slowly, depending on its mass. The most massive stars explode in a supernova, ejecting enormous amounts of matter and energy, and triggering the formation of new star nurseries elsewhere in the galaxy. Less massive stars, like the Sun, begin to swell and gradually transform into red giants. New nuclear reactions begin in its core, and it starts to lose more and more of its gas. The ejection of matter accelerates, forming an envelope known as a planetary nebula. At the center, a white dwarf remains, a dense extinct star. A star's life expectancy therefore depends on its mass and the amount of fuel available to produce its energy. The Sun lives for around 10 billion years and is already halfway through its life, at around 5 billion years. This doesn't mean, however, that the more massive a star is, the longer it will live. Even if it has a lot of fuel, it also burns a lot of fuel, so it will burn out more quickly. This is how a star tens of times more massive than the Sun can have a life hundreds of times shorter. In the celestial panorama, stars may appear to be relatively isolated from one another, but in fact they are not solitary bodies, but come together to form associations and clusters of varying density. In some cases, they form much closer links, forming pairs known as double stars or binary systems, in which the evolution of one star influences that of the other. In the majority of binary systems, the distance between stars remains high. The periods of revolution of one star around the other usually exceed 100 years. The discovery of double stars was one of the first to be made using telescopes. The star Mizar, located in the Big Dipper, was the first to be identified as such. Scientists immediately surmise that Mizar must not represent a unique case, given the sheer number of stars in the universe. In the 1780s, a catalog was published reporting the observation of almost 700 double stars. The biggest problem in the early days of discovery was whether the double stars observed were really related to each other or whether their association was merely the result of perspective. It was therefore necessary to measure the distance between some of them using the parallax method. Scientists observed that each star followed a complicated ellipsoidal pattern in the sky. These results confirmed that the double stars were physically associated and constituted a binary system, since according to the laws of celestial mechanics, two gravitationally bound bodies follow an elliptical orbit. Double stars are divided into three main categories, there are visual binaries, photometric binaries, and spectroscopic binaries. This classification refers to the way in which the stars are associated. Visual binaries are so named because of their motion relative to another star, presumed to be its companion. Photometric binaries are those that exhibit periodic variations in brightness, due to reciprocal eclipses of one star over the other. They are also known as eclipsing variables. Spectroscopic binary stars are known thanks to a stellar spectroscopy technique that uses the Doppler effect of spectral lines to check whether two stars at a close distance are related or not. The Doppler effect is a physical phenomenon 
whereby an observer moving in relation to a source emitting waves perceives an apparent change in the frequency of these waves. Let's discover some of these double stars. Located in the constellation Scorpius, some 378 light years from us, is the binary star AR Scorpi. Its main star is a white dwarf about the size of our planet Earth, but 200,000 times more massive. Its companion is not visible. It must be a small, cold red dwarf orbiting with a main star around their common berry center. AR Scorpi is characterized by unexplained light fluctuations. In fact, when it was first studied, it was mistakenly classified as a variable star. Every minute, its optical flux increases by a factor of four in less than 30 seconds from an apparent magnitude of 16.9 to 13.6. Observations of AR Scorpi since the 1970s suggest that it belongs to a class of stars known as intermediate polars. This class defines spinning white dwarfs that attract and incorporate material from a second, lower mass companion star. The result is an accretion disk. Located around 8,475 light years away in the constellation Sagittarius, WR104 is a Wolf Riot star. It was discovered in 1998. A Wolf Riot star is defined as a hot star with a mass equivalent to several tens of solar masses. During a brief phase following its main sequence, a Wolf Riot star expels the matter surrounding its core in the form of very violent stellar winds. The core is then exposed and explodes into a supernova. WR-104 is a binary star accompanied by another OB-type star. Its orbital period is around 240 days, giving their stellar wind a spiral shape, extending over 200 AU. Recent optical measurements of WR-104's rotational axis suggest that when the star explodes supernova, it will emit jets of material from its poles, as well as energetic radiation, and even a gamma ray burst, which could be dangerous for Earth due to its proximity to the star. The explosion could occur within 300,000 years, giving us plenty of time to confirm this hypothesis. LL Pegasi is a Mira-type variable star located 3,900 light-years from the Sun. Mira-type variables are characterized by very red colors, luminosity amplitudes greater than one magnitude, and pulsation periods greater than 100 days. These red giants are in the final stage of their stellar evolution. Within a few million years, they will expel their outer envelope to form a planetary nebula and become white dwarfs. This binary star system includes an extreme carbon star. This type of star develops a chemical composition in which carbon dominates over oxygen. The two stars are hidden by the dust cloud ejected from the carbon star and can only be observed in infrared light. LL Pegasi is surrounded by a spiral-shaped nebula that is considered a protoplanetary nebula. It adopts the unusual shape of an Archimedean spiral, a curve described by a point moving uniformly on a straight line rotating itself uniformly around a point. This shape may be due to the interaction between the stellar companion and the carbonaceous star. Eta Carinae is a star system composed of at least two stars. It's known by its French name, Eta de la Carine. 
It is incredibly bright, more than five million times brighter than the sun. Eta Carinae is located 7,500 light years from planet Earth in the constellation Carinae within our own Milky Way. It is only 2.5 million years old. The two components, Eta Carinae A and B, are difficult to observe as a very dense bipolar nebula surrounds them. The nebula is called Homonculus. Eta Carinae B orbits eccentrically, completing one revolution in around 5.54 years. Eta Carinae A is a blue hypergiant variable star. Astronomers estimate its diameter to be around 1,150 times that of the Sun, equivalent to about 1.6 billion kilometers. Its surface temperature reaches 40,000 degrees Celsius, or 72,000 degrees Fahrenheit. At magnitude 4, Eta Carinae is easily seen by the naked eye in pollution-free skies. However, its location far in the southern celestial hemisphere makes it invisible to European and most North American observers. Nevertheless, observers in the southern hemisphere in New Caledonia, or Réunion, for example, can see it rise brilliantly in the sky. It appears to be the brightest star in the large Carina Nebula, between Canopus and the Southern Cross. Through a telescope, Eta Carinae appears distinctly orange, enclosed within the nebula. Eta Carinae underwent an explosion observable from Earth only 150 years ago. The consequence was the formation of the gigantic nebula known as the Homunculus Nebula. It now reaches the size of the solar system. Until the 17th century, there were no reliable records of Eta Carinae. The first accurate observation of the star was made in 1677 by Edmund Halley but its position was simply indicated in relation to another star within the constellation Charles Oak. The scientists gave it an apparent magnitude of 4, which corresponds to 3.3 on the modern scale. For much of the 17th century, Eta Carinae was not distinguished by its luminosity. In 1827, William Burchell observed the star's unusual brightness. He wondered about the possibility of variations in the star's brightness. At the same time, British astronomer John Herschel made a series of precise measurements from South America and demonstrated that Eta Carinae constantly shone at around magnitude 1.4. But one evening in late 1837, he was surprised to find that the star was brighter than Rigel. This marked the start of a period known as the Great Eruption, which would last almost 18 years. In January 1838, Eta Carinae equaled Alpha Centauri in luminosity. This diminished over the following three months. Over the following years, the star's luminosity was regularly observed to rise and fall. In 1895, Eta Carinae's luminosity faded to magnitude 7.5. Its visual dimming is thought to be due to the gas and dust expelled during the Great Eruption. The variations in brightness observed during the eruption are more akin to the behavior of a supernova than that of a massive star releasing its layers before dying. Despite the power of the explosion, however, the star survived. The explosion enabled it to eject its outer layers, but was not sufficient to completely annihilate Eta Carinae. According to some astronomers, this phenomenon can be explained by the fact that the eruption was actually the fusion of two stars.
In 2018, a published study proposed a scenario that could explain the events observed during Eta Carinae eruptions. Originally, it could have been a triple system, made up of a tight binary, Eta Carinae A and B, around which a third member, Eta Carinae C, gravitated. These three components would then undergo multiple interactions. As the largest star in the system, Eta Carinae A reached the end of its life. It expanded and lost part of its atmosphere to its companion, Eta Carinae B. A transfer of mass between member A and member B took place. A transfer of mass between member A and member B upset the system's gravitational balance. Eta Carinae A moved away from B, which became much more massive. As it moved away, Eta Carinae A began to interact gravitationally with a third star, Eta Carinae C, which had remained further away from the system. As A tended to move away from the system, C altered its trajectory and moved closer to Eta Carinae B. It eventually merged with this star. It eventually merged with Eta Carinae B, resulting in an extraordinary projection of matter. At the start of the merger between Eta Carinae C and B, the projected matter was dense. They expanded very slowly. At the very moment of fusion, a huge explosion occurred. This created the bipolar lobes of the Homunculus Nebula, which are still in place today. This material caught up with the slow-moving projectiles and pushed them along, heating up the environment. This was the main source of light during the Great Eruption, observed by astronomers from 1837 onwards. While Eta Carinae B and C merge, Eta Carinae A continues to gravitate in its elliptical orbit. It crosses the outer layer of B every 5.5 years, generating shock waves that give rise to X-ray emissions. Eta Carinae's increased brightness is probably due to the dissipation of the dust cloud in our line of sight. This cloud completely surrounds the star and its winds. The light the star emits in the direction of Earth is obscured. As for homunculus, it can be observed because it is 200 times larger than the dust cloud. According to scientists, around 2032, the dust cloud will have completely dissipated, revealing the stable brilliance of the central star. It will then be possible to study Eta Carinae with precision. The four-component spectroscopic binary system of KIC 71777553 is a particularly interesting and complex structure. Using the Kepler Space Telescope to study the system, two binary stars in orbit around each other in a hierarchical structure in which one of the two systems is an eclipsing binary were revealed. The two binaries each have an accretion disk, which in turn are surrounded by an outer accretion disk. Astronomers became interested in this star system because a study of one of the eclipses revealed variations in eclipse timing, with an amplitude of around 100 seconds and a period of 529 days. This phenomenon suggests that an exoplanet is evolving in an eccentric orbit around this system, which would be a great opportunity to study how planets form and evolve within hierarchical systems. The WISE pair 2150-7520AB is a large binary. Its two members are separated by a large distance. Located 78.9 light-years away in the constellation Octant, this strange binary system consists of two brown dwarfs. They are separated by 341 astronomical units, a record equivalent 
to eight times Pluto's distance from the Sun. The system could be between 500 million and 10 billion years old. Prior to this discovery, astronomers did not believe that such a system could remain connected over such a large distance for billions of years due to the interactions undergone in the galaxy. Zeta Ursae Majoris, translated as Zeta of the Big Dipper in French, is a multiple star located in the constellation of the Big Dipper, the second star from the end of the chariot. Its traditional name is Mizar. Mizar is the star in the middle of the panhandle. To see it with the naked eye, you need good eyesight. With binoculars, however, it's easy to see. Using a higher magnification telescope, it turns into a sumptuous pair of tightly packed white stars. The distance between these two stars is equivalent to 381 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Its apparent magnitude is around 2.2. Mizar was the first telescopic binary to be discovered. It consists of Mizar A and Mizar B. The latter, the secondary star, has a magnitude of 4.0 and lies 381 astronomical units from Mizar A. It takes thousands of years for them to orbit each other. Mizar is accompanied by a star faintly visible to the naked eye called Alcor. Also known as 80 Ursae Majoris, it has a magnitude of 3.99. The pairing of Mizar and Alcor has recently been recognized as a true double star. They are also nicknamed the Horse and the Rider. More than a quarter of a light year apart, their individual motions prove that they are moving together. Sixty-one Cygni, also known as Bessel's star, is a system of two orange dwarf stars of spectral class K, of types comparable to the Sun, located in the constellation Cygni. It is characterized by its ultra-fast self-motion within our galaxy. With a magnitude of 5.2, it's easy to see with a naked eye under a clear sky. With the aid of a small telescope, its two components can be easily seen. Both have a beautiful orange-red color and almost the same spectral type. Their difference in brightness gives the impression of slightly different hues. This is due to the fact that they are one magnitude apart. The fainter star appears a deeper red than the brighter one. In addition to being a sumptuous binary system, 61 Du Cygni is considered to be the star of greatest historical importance. It was the very first star whose distance was assessed using the parallax method. It was in 1806 that astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi noticed that this star was moving rapidly across the sky, implying that it must be rather close to the Earth. Astronomers then investigated whether the star had a slight to and fro motion. This oscillation over a period of one year is expected due to the Earth's rotation around the Sun. Nearby stars must change position relative to more distant stars as the Earth traverses its orbit if we follow the parallax phenomenon. A few years later in 1838, Astronomer Frederick Bessel succeeded in making a precise measurement of the Swan 61 motion over the course of a year. For the very first time, he was able to estimate the distance to a star. The value he found at the time, 10.5 light years, was very close to the currently measured value of 11.4 light years. This discovery confirmed the totally unexpected depth of the universe at the time, 100,000 billion kilometers.
70 Ophiuchi is a binary star in the Ophiuchi constellation, about 17 light years from Earth. It is known for having one of the shortest periods. In fact, it takes just 83 years for its two limbs to circle each other. The loop is so fast because the two objects are relatively close to each other. Their period of revolution is within a few years of that of Uranus around the Sun. This means that the average distance between the two members is only around 3 billion kilometers. The proximity of 70 Ophiuchi to the Earth means that we can easily distinguish the two components, despite their close proximity. The pair's main star, 70 Ophiuchi A, is a yellow-orange dwarf comparable in size to the Sun. The secondary star, 70 Ophiuchi b is an orange dwarf much less massive and luminous than its companion. The orbit of 70 Ophiuchi b is eccentric. It can pass within 11.4 astronomical units of 70 Ophiuchi a at its closest and 34.8 astronomical units at its furthest. Their next maximum separation will occur in 2024. Seen from Earth, this binary star is spectacular, easy to separate, and very colorful. The yellow and orange tones can already be seen through a 60mm telescope. The color of the pair are reminiscent of those of 61 of the swan. This multiple star system is located in the Lyra constellation, around 162 light years from the solar system. Epsilon de la Lyrae is an exceptional star, consisting of a pair of double stars called Epsilon 1 and Epsilon 2, and is sometimes nicknamed the Double Double. Kepler's laws state that the closer the stars are, the faster they rotate around their common center of gravity. However, Epsilon 1 and Epsilon 2 are separated by an abyss estimated at 10,000 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun, so they orbit each other very slowly. Their rotation period is estimated in hundreds of thousands of years. The Epsilon 1 binary system has a rotation period of around 600 years. Epsilon 2 has a rotation period twice as long. The stars in Epsilon 1 have magnitudes of 5.02 and 6.02 respectively, and those in Epsilon 2 have magnitudes of 5.14 and 5.37. Epsilon 1 and Epsilon 2 form a beautiful double star in binoculars, or even with a naked eye. The two double systems look very similar, but are oriented perpendicular to each other. Given the young age of the stars that make up this double-double, they appear very white in telescopes. Observed with an instrument more powerful than binoculars, each of the two components splits, and each system appears as two double stars. Sirius is a binary star system consisting of a main sequence star and an accompanying white dwarf. Also known as Alpha Canis Majoris, it lies in the constellation of the Great Dog, where it is the main star. From Earth, Sirius is the brightest star in the sky after the Sun. A white star, it is located 8.6 light years from the Sun. Its proximity and luminosity make it one of the most coveted subjects of study for astronomers. From our temperate northern latitudes, Sirius can be seen low above the southern horizon on winter nights, shimmering with a magnificent steel-white glow. It generally glows with turbulence and on certain nights can show iridescent flashes Its little companion, which is 10,000 times less bright than the main star, is much more discreet through telescopes. 
Because of its relative proximity to the Sun, Sirius has its own motion, which means that its position on the celestial sphere varies faster than that of many other stars. Sirius is a binary star made up of two parts, Sirius A and Sirius B. Sirius A, a white main sequence star, is the one we can observe with the naked eye. Its mass is around 2.12 solar masses. It is thought to be around 250 million years old. Sirius A's chemical composition is highly abundant in iron, three times that of the Sun. Its surface has a weak magnetic field. Keeping Sirius A company is Sirius B, a white dwarf orbiting with a period of about 49.9 years. Its mass is 1.03 solar masses. The distance between Sirius A and Sirius B varies between 8.1 and 31.5 astronomical units, with an average distance of 19.5 astronomical units. The orbit of their system is particularly elliptical. Although the angular separation between Sirius A and Sirius B is large enough to observe both members, this remains compromised by the contrast in brightness between the two. Sirius B has a much lower brightness than Sirius A. It is warmer and smaller, with a diameter comparable to that of the Earth. The presence of Sirius B has been studied thanks to the study of Sirius A's own motion. As Sirius B was already a white dwarf, it must initially have been more massive than Sirius A, with a mass of at least six solar masses. A stellar wind phenomenon stripped Sirius B of much of its mass, making it the least massive star in the system today. Epsilon Arrigae is an eclipsing binary star in the constellation of Kokur. It is also known by the traditional names of Haldus, Almaz, or Al Ans. It lies around 2,000 light years away. Its brightness ranges from 3.0 to 3.8 magnitudes over a period of just over 27 years. Spotting it in the sky is no easy task. It is visible in winter in the northern hemisphere, alongside the bright yellow star Capella. It forms the apex of the isosceles triangle that forms the nose of the constellation of the Coachman. An eclipsing binary star system is a binary star in which the plane of revolution of both stars is in the observer's line of sight. The two members therefore periodically eclipse each other. Eclipsing binaries are variable stars in that they darken each other. The visible star in the pair is a supergiant of spectral type, A91A, one of the brightest stars within 1,000 parsecs of the Sun. Its diameter is roughly equivalent to 100 solar diameters. The other member of the pair, eclipsing, cannot be seen. The phenomenon observed during an eclipse is that the level of obscuration of the first star by the companion diminishes rapidly. It's as if a hole remains in the latter. Astronomers have been studying this mysterious star since the 19th century. An eclipse in 2009 and 2010 enabled a team of scientists to study Epsilon Arrigae using a Californian inferometer. The eclipse began in August 2009 and peaked at the end of December of the same year. It persisted throughout 2010 until the star returned to normal brightness in 2011. The images revealed a dust disk 1.5 billion kilometers or 900,000 miles in diameter, equivalent to the distance between Saturn and the Sun, and 75 million kilometers thick. It contained a small, massive star. This discovery confirmed a hypothesis 
defining epsilon RGA as an atypical binary system. This is the combination of a large low-mass star nearing the end of its life, which is occasionally eclipsed by a star itself wrapped in this large disk of dust. This phenomenon leads to eclipses lasting 18 months. Algol is another eclipsing variable binary like Epsilon Aurigae. It is also known as Beta Persei. Algol is located in the constellation Perseus and has a magnitude of 2. Algol is 92.8 light years away. Its proper motion is very small compared to its radial velocity. From Earth, it is easily visible to the naked eye. During an eclipse, its brightness gradually diminishes over five hours until it reaches minimum brightness. It then regains its initial brightness over the following five hours. This change in brightness can be seen by comparing it with the star Almach, or Gamma Andromeda, which is usually as bright as it is, but becomes noticeably fainter during an eclipse. Its character as a variable star means that it slowly changes its brightness every two days and 21 hours, but not due to a change in size, as is very often the case with variable stars. In 1783, an astronomer proposed an explanation for this phenomenon of diminishing luminosity. It is caused by an eclipse that occurs every time a small companion passes in front of the main star. Algol was thus discovered as a very close double star called a spectroscopic binary, whose orbital plane lies precisely in our line of sight. Albirio, also known as Beta Cygni, is easily observed by the naked eye at the tip of the Cygnus cross in the constellation Cygnus. When viewed through even the smallest telescope, it is a strong contender for the title of most beautiful star in the sky. A higher magnification will easily distinguish the two stars, which shine with magnificent color. The brighter one has a yellow-orange glow, while the fainter one has a beautiful bluish hue. This majestic appearance has also earned it the nickname Topaz and Sapphire. Albirio is the most contrasting double star available to astronomy enthusiasts and the fifth brightest star in the Cygnus constellation. The Albirio pair consists of two stars, a yellow star of magnitude 3.1 named Albirio A and a blue star of magnitude 5.1 named Albirio B. They are separated by 34 seconds of arc making them visible even with small observing instruments. After many years of discussion about the nature of this pair, it was established that it was a visual binary. A visual double star defines a pair of nearby stars on the sky, whose two stars can be identified separately using an observing tool such as a telescope. Albirio A is a red giant star of spectral class K32. Its temperature reaches 4200 degrees Celsius or 7600 degrees Fahrenheit. Albirio B is a slightly variable blue star. It is 190 times brighter than the Sun, has a mass equivalent to 3.3 solar masses, and a temperature of 12,000 degrees Celsius or 21,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Its rotation period is less than 15 hours, making it a fast rotating star. As a result, it loses part of its mass and is encircled by a disk form from the same ejected mass. In 1980, astrophysicists thought they had detected the existence of another companion, quite close to Albirio. This companion, called C, is located 46 astronomical units from the primary star. In this sense, it could be a triple system, but this observation 
has not yet been confirmed. HR 6819, also known as QVTEL, lies in the telescope constellation over a thousand light years from the Sun. This binary star comprises a B type star with emission lines, cataloged as a variable star, and a B3 type star. The pair formed around 50 million years ago. Scientists long believed that the two stars orbited a stellar black hole, forming a triple system. But recently, new data has confirmed that this is a binary system. Between the two stars is a phenomenon known as stellar vampirism, in which one star feeds off the other. The giant star is surrounded by a ring of gas that is the result of the attraction of the smaller star, stripped of its atmosphere. R. Aquarii is one of a group of strange binary stars known as symbiotic. It lies around 650 light years from Earth. As early as the 11th century, its bursts of brightness were noticed. The term symbiotic suggests a particular kind of interaction between stars. It involves a transfer of matter. These stellar duos are extremely rare. They consist of a cold red giant star and a small hot compact star. The dwarf star takes on the atmosphere of the giant star. This loss of matter creates a stellar wind that wraps around the dwarf star an accretion disk reaching 100,000 degrees Celsius takes shape, and bipolar plasma jets can be emitted. Initially, the binary is in a quiet equilibrium phase, during which the giant star loses energy over a large part of the spectrum. As soon as this equilibrium is disturbed, the binary enters an active phase, with great variations in energy and luminosity reaching several magnitudes. The star can become up to 750 times brighter than normal. R. Aquarii is characterized by a nebula, resulting from several major eruptions. Its main star is a Mira-type variable red giant, with an effective temperature of 2600 degrees Celsius, or 4700 degrees Fahrenheit. It is accompanied by a white dwarf star with an effective temperature of 20,000 degrees Celsius or 36,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Their orbital period is 44 years. The giant star is weakened by the upper layers of its atmosphere, which become a stellar wind for the benefit of the dwarf star. This gas evolves in the equatorial plane and also forms a very luminous accretion disk, sometimes accompanied by a bipolar jet. Once the dwarf star has accumulated enough gas, it explodes into a nova. The gas ejected into space forms a bubble on either side of the disk's equatorial plane. A few thousand years later, the dwarf star begins a new cycle of accretion and eruption a new bubble of gas forms like an hourglass. The dwarf star produces thermonuclear fusion reactions, making its surface 250 times brighter. This cycle continues for as long as the giant star feeds the dwarf star. After this overview of binary stellar systems, let's explore stellar systems with more than two members. Multiple star systems are systems with more than two stars. They can be triple if they contain three stars, quadruple if they contain four, quintuple if they contain five, and so on. These systems remain smaller than open star clusters, which contain up to a thousand stars. Modeling a multiple star system is far more complex than that of a double system. The best known are triple systems. They are often hierarchical, i.e. they contain a pair of nearby stars 
linked to a more distant companion. Today, we know of systems with up to seven members. Let's take a closer look at what these different systems look like. The Milky Way is populated by over 200 billion stars. Of these, only those that remain close to our solar system are visible to the naked eye from Earth. The closest of these is Alpha Centauri, a complex star composed of three stars. It lies 4.37 light years from the Sun. Also known as Alpha Centauri, it comprises Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Alpha Centauri C, more commonly known as Proxima Centauri. It is also thought to have at least one planet. Because of its proximity and accessibility, Alpha Centauri is a popular subject of study for astronomers and is one of the most studied multiple star systems. In the southern celestial hemisphere, Alpha Centauri twinkles close to the Southern Cross. As the third brightest star in the sky, after Sirius and Canopus, its brilliance is breathtaking. Its two main components form a double star that's easy to observe through a small telescope. The third companion is a little less spectacular, at magnitude 11. Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B are the two main stars. They form a binary star, Alpha Centauri AB. These stars are similar to the Sun. Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass of the Sun and 1.519 times its luminosity. Cooler and less massive, Alpha Centauri B has 0.907 times the mass of the Sun and 0.445 times its luminosity. The third companion, Proxima Centauri, is a faint, tiny star called a red dwarf. Measuring just one and a half times the size of Jupiter, it is far less luminous than either of these two companions, but holds the record for closest proximity to the Sun, having been at a distance of 4.24 light years for 32,000 years. Proxima Centauri and Alpha Centauri AB are separated by around 13,000 astronomical units, or 430 times the radius of Neptune's orbit. All three stars have their own motion on the celestial vault. Their positions have slowly varied over the centuries. Originally, Alpha Centauri was a double star. The Alpha Centauri AB pair would have adopted Proxima Centauri as it passed close by. Proxima Centauri is therefore gravitationally linked to both stars. HD 188753 is a star system made up of three stars, A, B, and C, located 151 light years away in the constellation of Cygnus. The special feature of this system is that it hosts at least one exoplanet, HD 188753 AB. This is the first exoplanet to be discovered in a three star system. The components HD 188753b and c orbit each other in 156 days at the same time as it orbits the third central star HD 188753a in 25.7 years at a distance of 12.3 astronomical units. The exoplanet HD 188753ab orbits the main star. It's a gas giant like Jupiter, but stands very close to its star. HD 131399 is a three-star star system in the southern constellation Centauri, about 333 light years from our planet. The system comprises three members. 
The central star, HD 131399A, is a blue star of apparent magnitude 7.08. It is not observable to the naked eye, due to its low luminosity. Accompanying the star is HD 131399AB, a background star that has long been mistaken for a planet. HD 131399A is accompanied by B and C. The latter two form a binary system. Polaris, also known as Alpha Ursae Minoris, is the brightest star in the Little Dipper constellation. It's this star that we call the North Star. It is reputed to indicate with some precision the direction of the celestial North Pole. It has traditionally been used by many civilizations for navigation and has been renamed by many traditional names. Polaris is its traditional name of Latin origin. Its position almost merges with the direction of the Earth's axis of rotation. The other stars in the sky seem to revolve around it. It never appears in the southern hemisphere, and conversely, never sets in the northern hemisphere. Due to the precision of the equinoxes, the north celestial pole changes position over hundreds of years. 4,800 years ago, Thuban was the pole star. The star Vega will become one in the future. Polaris is a supergiant Cepheid variable, Alpha Ursae Minoris A, which is accompanied by two smaller stars. Among them, it forms a visual binary with Alpha Ursae Minoris B. They are so close together that the companion was only discovered by its gravitational attraction to Polaris A thanks to photographs taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2006. After this overview of triple stellar systems, let's explore quadruple systems, which consist of four members. Four Centauri, also known as H Centauri, is a multiple star in the Centaurus constellation. This system is approximately 652 light years from Earth. Four Centauri is characterized as a hierarchical quadruple star system. Its two pairs are separated by 14 arc seconds. Four Centauri A is the primary component. It is a spectroscopic binary, which defines a pair of objects whose orbital motion is detected by the variation in radial velocity of one or more components of the system. Its companion is then detectable by the Doppler effect exerted in the spectrum as it orbits. Only the light from the main star is visible in the spectrum. The visible star is a blue-white subgiant with an apparent magnitude of 4.72. 4 Centauri b is the secondary component. It is also a single-line spectroscopic binary. The apparent star is a white main-sequence star. Its apparent magnitude is 8.53. Andromeda is an ancient constellation in the Northern Hemisphere, identified by the astronomer Ptolemy. Andromeda is visible from our northern latitudes for much of the year. Starting from the square of Pegasus, Andromeda lies slightly to the northeast, identified by its four stars, aligned towards Perseus, Alpha, Delta, Beta, and Gamma. It has a long A shape. The large spiral galaxy M31 is the most characteristic object in this constellation and one of the most famous in the sky. It is known as the Andromeda Galaxy. Of the constellation's three dominant stars, two are multiple systems. 
Alpha Andromedae is Andromeda's brightest star. It is also known as Alpha Rats or Syrah. On the celestial vault, it represents the head of Andromeda. Gamma Andromedae is a quadruple system, but it's possible that one or two more distant stars also belong to the system. Also known as Almac or Sadachibia, it lies at the end of the southern leg of the constellations A. It displays contrasting orange and blue colors. Its main star, designated Y1 Andromedae, is an orange giant 80 times larger and 2,000 times brighter than the Sun. It is the brightest component of the system at magnitude 2. Y2 Andromedae revolves around it and is itself a double star. Y2A Andromedae and Y2B Andromedae revolve around each other in 61 years in a highly elliptical orbit. Both stars are blue and Y2A Andromedae is itself a double star, with its companion orbiting in just 2.7 days. Mu Draconis is a multiple star in the Dragon constellation. It lies around 85 light years from the solar system, close to the dragon's head. Its apparent magnitude is 4.92. Mu Draconis is also known by its traditional name, Alrakis. This quadruple system comprises four stars, Mu Draconis A and Mu Draconis B are the two main stars. They are very similar yellow-white stars in close orbits. Their apparent magnitude is 5.6. They can be observed with a small telescope under perfect weather conditions. Mu Draconis B is itself a spectroscopic binary. Mu Draconis C, meanwhile, is a red dwarf about 12 arc seconds from its companions A and B. After this overview of quadruple star systems, let's explore quintuple systems, which consist of five members. Sigma de Orion, also known as Sigma Orionis, is a star system made up of five stars located in the Orion constellation, some 1,150 light years from our planet. The main component is Sigma Orionis AB, a double star whose two members are separated by 0.25 arc seconds. These are rather young dwarfs, only a few million years old. Sigma Orionis A is a blue star with a magnitude of 4.2. It is the brightest of the pair. Sigma Orionis B is a B-type star with a magnitude of 5.1. The pair completes one revolution in 170 years at a distance of around 90 astronomical units. The two components, A and B, radiate the equivalent of at least 30,000 solar luminosities. They are one of the most massive pairs of visual binaries. They reach masses equivalent to 18 and 13.5 solar masses, respectively. Sigma, Orionis, D and E are just behind the A and B pair, in terms of luminosity. They are respectively 4,600 and 15,000 astronomical units away from Sigma, Orionis, A and B. They are dwarf stars, reaching around seven solar masses. Sigma Orionis E is referred to as a strange star because of its high helium content. The final component of this quintuple system is Sigma Orionis C. It is close to the AB pair at around 3,900 astronomical units. It is an A-type dwarf star. The orbits of Sigma Orionis C, D, and E are unstable. They may be accelerated by gravitation and expelled from the system long before they die.
also known by its traditional name, Dabi, Beta, Capricorni is a quintuple star system located in the constellation of Capricorn, 328 light years from Earth. It lies close to the ecliptic, the plane in which the Earth orbits the Sun, and can be occulted by the Moon, but also more rarely by the planets. Beta Capricorni is a complex system. With binoculars or a small telescope, it can be mistaken for a double star. The brightest component, Beta Capricorni A, has an apparent magnitude of 3.05. Its fainter component, Beta Capricorni B, has an apparent magnitude of 6.09. Both are separated by at least 21,000 astronomical units. They complete their orbits in around 700,000 years these two main components are themselves made up of several stars. The most complex structure is that of Beta Capricorni A. It has at least three components, and its spectrum is difficult to interpret. A pair of stars dominates. Beta Capricorni AA is a blue-white dwarf with an apparent magnitude of 3.08. Its surface temperature reaches 4,700 degrees Celsius, or 8,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Its luminosity is 600 times that of the Sun, and its diameter 35 times that of the Sun. Beta Capricorni AB1 has an apparent magnitude of 7.20. It is accompanied by another guest, Beta Capricorni AB2 which orbits it with an orbital period of 8.7 days. Beta Capricorni B is the simplest and best known element. It has large quantities of mercury and manganese in its atmosphere. Beta Capricorni BA is a binary star comprising a giant 40 times more luminous than the Sun, with a magnitude of 6.1. The second companion, Beta Capricorni BB is around three arc seconds away. Other objects, Beta Capricorni D and E, are located in the vicinity of Beta Capricorni, but it is not known at present whether they are simply optical doubles or whether they are actually part of the system. Iota Cassiopeiae is a multiple star made up of five stars located in the Cassiopeia constellation, 133 light years from Earth. Its apparent magnitude is around 4.5. Iota Cassiopeiae A, the main component, is a white star with an apparent magnitude of 4.61. It is itself a binary whose two stars are known as Iota Cassiopeiae AA and Iota Cassiopeiae AB. Iota Cassiopeiae B is a yellow-white dwarf with an apparent magnitude of 6.87. The third and final component is Iota Cassiopeiae C, itself a tight binary of magnitude 8.50. Its two stars, Iota Cassiopeiae CA, a yellow dwarf, and Iota Cassiopeiae CB, a red dwarf, are separated by just 0.41 arc seconds. The Iota Cassiopeiae star system is one of the most beautiful. Of its five stars, only three are accessible to amateurs. A magnification of 100 times is sufficient to separate them, although observation is more comfortable at 200 times. Iota Cassiopeiae A emits a white glow, while Iota Cassiopeiae B is blue and orbits the latter. Finally, Iota Cassiopeiae C is also blue and moves slowly. A true visual spectacle for astronomy enthusiasts.
Also known as Alula australis, Z. ursae majoris is a multiple system of five stars located 27.3 light years away in the Big Dipper constellation. C. ursae majoris A and B are spectroscopic binaries. Their main stars, C. ursae majoris AA and AB, each have a low mass companion, named she Ursae Majoris AB, a red dwarf, and She Ursae Majoris BB, probably a white dwarf. The two main components, She Ursae Majoris AA and BA, form a visual binary star. They are on the same main sequence as the Sun. She Ursae Majoris AA is a yellow white dwarf about 101% the size of the Sun and 110% as bright as the Sun. Chi Ursae Majoris BA is a yellow dwarf, 78% the size of the Sun and 67% as bright as the Sun. Ten astronomical units separate these two components, and they take almost 60 years to complete an orbit. This system is enriched by a final object, a brown dwarf, which lies 500 arc seconds from the others. Zeta Cancri is a multiple star system in the constellation Cancer, around 80 light years from the Sun. It consists of five stars. Stars A and B orbit with a period of around 60 years. Component A has an apparent magnitude of 5.7. Two other components, CA and CB, orbit A and B in 1,115 years at a distance of 197 astronomical units. The CB member probably consists of two stars. After this overview of quintuple star systems, let's explore sextuple systems, which consist of six members. The star Castor, also known as Alpha Geminorum, is located in the constellation Gemini. One of the brightest stars in the night sky, it is the second brightest star in the constellation, after the star Pollux, also known as Beta Geminorum. It is 49.8 light years from the Sun. The traditional names Castor and Pollux were given to these two celestial twin stars, hence the name of the constellation Gemini, Gemini meaning twin in Latin. Castor is one of the twin sons of Zeus and Leda. Castor is a sextuple star system made up of three pairs of binary stars. The first pair, Castor A, is a spectroscopic binary with Castor AA as its main star and Castor AB as its secondary star. The second pair, Castor B, is also a spectroscopic binary. The main star is Castor BA and the secondary Castor BB. The third pair, Castor C, is a B-Y Draconis variable. The two stars are Castor CA, the main star, and Castor CB, the secondary star. In 2020, an 18th six-star system was discovered. It's one of the most astonishing we know of today. TIC 1687898840, located 1900 light years from Earth in the Eridan constellation. At the heart of this six-fold system are two pairs of eclipsing binary stars. These are pairs A and C. Almost 4.8 million kilometers or 3 million miles separate each of their stars. The stars in each pair orbit their partner within a few days. The two pairs also orbit together around their common barycenter. Pair B located 14.9 million kilometers or 9.2 million miles away, orbits pair AC. In this system, 
Each time a star moves in front of and then behind its fainter companion, an eclipse takes place. As the orbital plane of the stars in TIC 1687898840 is in our line of sight, we have the enormous privilege from Earth of watching the stars eclipse their partners. The primary stars in this sextuple system are vaguely brighter and hotter than the Sun. The secondary stars are darker and cooler. Pairs A and C are linked by their proximity. The third pair, further away, could have planets. After this overview of sextuple star systems, let's explore the seven-member septuple systems. To date, only two septuple systems have been discovered. New Scorpi, translated into French as New Du Scorpion, is a septuple star system located in the constellation of Scorpio. This hierarchical system is made up of two subsystems, with four and three members respectively. New Scorpi AB is the first subsystem, comprising four stars. Two stars are located at the center, New Scorpi AA and New Scorpi AB. A third orbits this pair, New Scorpi AC. New Scorpi B the fourth and most distant star orbits this pair. New Scorpi CD is the second subsystem, made up of three stars. A pair of stars, New Scorpi D, made up of New Scorpi DA and DB, orbits the third star, New Scorpi C. AR Cassiopeia is the second septuple system known to date. It lies in the constellation Cassiopeia and comprises seven stars. The main subsystem, AR Cassiopeia AB, is a triple system. A little further out are two other stars, AR Cassiopeia C and D, then another pair of stars, AR Cassiopeia F and G are nearby. These last four are common companions in their own right. Although this overview of multiple star systems seems remarkable, it represents no more than a handful of the systems that populate the cosmos. We now know that they are an important component of our own galaxy as well as other galaxies in the universe. Multiple stellar systems can experience complex interactions between the stars that make them up. These interactions can influence the orbits of the stars, cause matter transfers between them, and even lead to collisions or star mergers. The gravitational effects of multiple stars can also disrupt the protoplanetary disks that surround stars affecting the formation and evolution of planets in these systems. The presence of multiple star systems can have an impact on the life and habitability of the planets that surround them. The complex orbits and gravitational interactions between stars can lead to significant variations in environmental conditions, such as luminosity, tides, and gravitational forces which could have consequences for the stability of planetary orbits in conditions favorable to life. Studying these multi-star stellar systems helps us to better understand the diversity and complexity of the structure and dynamics of the universe, and thus to understand where we came from.